everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video all about glider kitchens. I feel like in the sugar glider community, there's all these little terms that get thrown around that if you're new to the community or if you're not very active, it can be really confusing and really overwhelming. Glider kitchens are one of those. So what is a glider kitchen? How to make one? Whether or not you should use one? and how to make sure that it's safe is some of the things we're going to be talking about in this basics video. Let me know if there's any other topics or terms that you hear thrown around in the glider community that you'd like me to dissect. And if you have any additional questions about glider kitchens, just let me know. So first, what is a glider kitchen? So a glider kitchen is just a plastic box with a hole cut out. I feel like the kitchen is kind of a weird term because though you don't make the glider's food in here, the gliders end up eating in here. For those of you that have gliders, you're going to find out very soon that they're really messy eaters. These were in my boy's cage last night. So just in one evening, this is all the mess that they managed to make. And if you don't have a glider kitchen, you can imagine that this mess is either gonna be all over your walls or your cage. So a lot of people use glider kitchens because it's easier to clean, keeps the cage from smelling less. It's also more sanitary for the glider. If you've ever had any issues with fruit flies or with insects, because gliders eat a lot of fresh sugary food, if you don't clean it well, you're gonna have those issues. So if you have issues with that, a glider kitchen can solve that. And and it can also be better for your sugar gliders because you know that they're actually eating all the food that you give them rather than it spilling through the cage and them not having access to it. So I guess your next question is whether or not you need to use one. I feel like the need to use it isn't really there. They're really practical and they're a really good option for a lot of people. I always use my glider kitchen, but there are some risks to using a glider kitchen and there are a lot of alternatives which might work better for you. The simplest alternative that a lot of people use is if you have a cage that has bowls that attach to the side of it so your gliders can't tip it over or knock it over. A lot of people find with that that they don't even need to use a glider kitchen and that's usually easier to clean because you just have to clean the bowl rather than cleaning this entire contraption. Other people who have a flat bottom on their cage just don't find the need to use a glider kitchen because if it spills, it just spills on the flat bottom of the cage. A lot of people also can't use glider kitchens because there's some risks with them. If you do have a larger colony, you might might have the issue where one glider becomes really possessive over the glider kitchen especially if you're putting all of your gliders food in the glider kitchen and there's only one or two openings you might have a glider that becomes very territorial over their food which can happen often but when you have a glider kitchen you also enable them to not let in the other sugar gliders if you also have a really big colony you might have it where the entrances or exits are accidentally blocked just because you have so many gliders that are trying to fit in there so all of those are some of the risks a lot of people just don't like having to clean this type of box. They think that it's more work and they prefer to use something like this. This is probably one of the more safer options and a lot of people just think that it's easier. So if you don't have a flat bottom cage and you have the wire cage, what you can do is you can just add your food onto a plate like this. It doesn't have to be metal. A plastic plate would work fine too. If you have the raised edges, that's probably a little bit easier so the food won't spill as much, but a normal plate would work too. You can just use something like this. A lot of people say that it's easier to clean because they don't like cleaning and the nooks and crevices of the glider kitchen. And a lot of people don't like the glider kitchen because at the top of it, there can often be a lot of pee and poo. So a lot of people just don't like it for that aspect. So those are the main risks associated with the glider kitchen, but a lot of those risks can be prevented based on how you make the glider kitchen. Like I said before, I really like my glider kitchen and I plan on using glider kitchens for as long as I'm owning gliders because they work well for me. I like that I can wash them and if I'm not in the mood to hand wash them, I can always just throw them in the dishwasher with the rest of my dishes. It's also really convenient because they're really cheap and you can have multiple of them and they work well for my glider. So how do you make a glider kitchen so that it's safe? Well, like I said, in the simplest way, it's just a plastic box with the hole cut out and to make sure that the hole doesn't have any sharp edges, you're going to burn the edges of the hole. So knowing that, you can pretty much make a glider kitchen out of any plastic box that you have. There's a few things to consider to make it work for your gliders. The first thing is the size of the box. So as you can see, this is a pretty large box. I'm going to be using this for four gliders. I have two separate pairs right now. So once they're all bonded, I wanted to make sure that I had a really big box. But even for two gliders, I had a box that was this size. You want to make sure that the box is big enough that the gliders have enough room to move around and not have to be on top of each other. A lot of people also 
also don't like using square boxes. They prefer circular boxes to make sure that the glider can't push the food into the corner of the box. They can corner it off. So if you can find a large circle box, that would probably be even more ideal. It's also important to consider the size of the box in relationship to your cage. A lot of glider cages have very little floor space, but they're really tall. So if you do have a lot of foraging toys and baby toys at the bottom of your cage and you want to add in a really big glider kitchen, it just may not be possible for a cage setup. So make sure the box that you're getting is going to fit through your cage doors and that it's actually going to work in your cage. A lot of people don't leave their glider kitchens in overnight. They just leave them in for a couple of hours and then they take them out. But my gliders never finish eating that soon, so mine stays in the whole night. Another thing you want to consider is the size of the hole and the number of holes that you have. For my two gliders, I was able to use this with just one hole. As you can see, it's a pretty small hole. There can only really be one that goes in or out of this hole at a time. It's important that you don't make too many holes that are too big because when you start getting that, you're really defeating the point of having fully enclosed plastic space. It might not really be necessary that that setup worked well for my gliders who were two males, but they were really well bonded. So they never had any issues about fighting over the food. But if you do have gliders that maybe aren't as well bonded or you have a larger colony where maybe not everyone gets along great with everyone, you wanna make sure that you have at least two holes. That's gonna make it so that it's a lot harder for one glider just to block off one entrance or exit. The size of the hole is also really important. If you do have a really large colony, you wanna make sure that it's big enough so that multiple gliders can go in and out of the same hole. It would be awful for one glider to be stuck in the hole part way while the other one is coming in or out. So make sure that it's big enough for that. You also want to consider placement of the holes. If you're doing just two holes and you have a colony of more than two gliders, I'd recommend doing them on opposite sides or adjacent sides. So rather than having two holes here, where it's really easy for one glider to be really territorial over it, if you do one hole here and you do one hole on the other side, that could work really well. You also want to consider whether you want to put holes on the top of your glider kitchen. A lot of people use glider kitchens this way where the lid is the top and a lot of people also use glider kitchens this way where this would be the top so know which way you're gonna do it I prefer using my glider kitchen this way because the lid usually has more groove so I'd rather that most of the food get caked on the bottom where it's a lot smoother I feel like most people online use it the other way around so I guess it depends on what you prefer you can add holes to the top which is really great you do have an extra entrance and an exit without having to sacrifice the cleanliness now if you don't want to add any holes or you just think it's too much to figure out or you just want something that's really easy the easiest way you can make a glider kitchen is just take the lid off and add your food in like this this will accomplish pretty much the same purpose you won't have any issue with territorialness because all the gliders can come in but the reason that a lot of people do like to have a top on theirs including myself is because gliders usually pee and poo from the top of their cage and a lot of the time they'll eat their food throughout the entire night so if you leave this in just at the bottom of the cage i found that i get a lot of pee and poo in their actual food so i prefer to have a top on and i do sometimes find food caked up on the top because gliders are crazy eaters i prefer having a top but if you have a larger colony and you're just worried that the holes might not work out and you're worried that someone's going to be territorial or you're just not in the mood to make any holes and you want an easier fit this is a great option and this makes it so you can still reuse it as regular tupperware you also want to consider the shape of your holes a lot of people prefer to do circles because again there's no edges so no glider can get caught in one little edge i made a square hole over here because it just fit the shape of my box better and my gliders were really well bonded so i never had an issue but when i'm gonna have, be having my four males together i'm definitely going to be doing circle holes so i'm going to film myself making this glider box really fast like i said you just want to plan out where your holes are going to be. I think I'm going to do one at the top and then I'm going to do one on the, on the other short end. Okay, so I just wrapped up my second glider kitchen. I just wanted to show you guys how it looks. So I have one hole here, and I feel like this could easily fit two or even three gliders. And I have another hole here, and again, could easily fit two or three gliders. So I think this is gonna work really well. I'm gonna add it in for two of my boys tonight because my four aren't bonded yet, and we can see how it works. And also continue using this for my old two boys until 
they're all bonded and then I can transition to just using this. I'm just about to add in the food into my brighter kitchen. As you can see, I cleaned this one off. It's really easy. You can just either do it in the dishwasher or you can just hand wash it. And all you do is you add the food in. I just added in through these holes, but if you want, you're welcome to take the top off and add it. And it's really easy to feed them. I think my boys are going to sneak out. Hello. So you just add it in like that. It's in there. You just run out of play. As you can see, they can both fit in easily and access their food. And this way, if they end up accidentally tipping it over or anything, the mess all stays contained. Well, these gliders are not bonded to me. That's why the cage is so messy because I'm swapping cages. Here you go. And I'm adding, I'm giving them the bigger glider kitchen because I don't know how bonded they are compared to my boys. So we have a dirty little man here. <laughs> You're so dirty, dude. And then we have another one who thinks he's hiding, but his tail is sticking out of the pouch. So I think this is his first time using a glider kitchen. Oh, this is adorable. And I don't know if you guys can see, but I actually spilled a little bit of their food on the floor when I was adding it in. But it's alright because it's all contained, so you can see along the edges. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning a bit more about glider kitchens. Let me know any questions that you still have or some things that weren't so clear in the video. And if you do have your own sugar gliders, let me know if you do use glider kitchens or you're planning on using glider kitchens. I hope this video didn't completely scare you guys away. There are a lot of things to consider. But at the end of the day, it's just a plastic box with a hole in it. And if it doesn't work for your gliders, it's really easy to take out. It's also really easy to make changes. So you can easily add in more holes or just take off the lid. So I think everyone should try it at least once and see if it works for their gliders.